Welcome back and uh, to our first major conversation on breakfast this morning. Nigeria's federal government recovered over 3.2 billion now. That's about uh, 6.3 million pounds of stolen monies from various jurisdictions globally. This is stolen government funds, you know, from various jurisdictions globally from March 2021 to May 2022. Now, this is as the federal government of Nigeria generated a total of 1.82 billion naira from the sale of bid forms, an actual sale of forfeited properties in the first 18 months of the Buhari administration. Now, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, disclosed this, uh, these to journalists on Thursday at a 46th session uh, of the State House briefing organized by uh, the presidential communications team at the Asu Rock. Fila. That's a good one. Now, according to the minister, the recovered foreign loot uh, has since been dispersed into key infrastructure projects nationwide. They include the second Niger Bridge, the Abuja Kanu Road, and the Lagos Ibano Expressway. Uh, he also says that um, the Justice Ministry has supported the federal government in various infrastructure funding agreements while lamenting that the country currently grapples with 329 billion naira of funding gap. Joining us to analyze this, we have Shigun Shopiton. He's a public affairs analyst and chairman of ACT Network, Ikeja. Uh, Shigun Shopiton, Shop good morning to you, and thank you very much for your time. Good morning. All right, thank you very much. Um, I, I, is it, is, are, you, are you surprised um, and uh, comfortable with the fact that the uh, Attorney General Federation is discussing uh, fiscal matters. Um, very little surprise um, people that are keen watchers of um, events in the country as far as this administration is concerned. Um, if there's anything that is clear, it's that um, uh, we're running a free-for-all. Um, I'm not even sure we can say we're, we're running a government because, you know, the fundamental duties that governments have um, this administration has been failing consistently at them across all levels. So, you know, to find um, an update coming from the Attorney General about recovered funds, um, well, it might not be too out of turn because I think he's approaching it because, or he's speaking about it because the the agencies that handle that bit of work report to him. Um, you know, but obviously, uh, what we need to hear uh, is a, is a total inventory and, a, and if you like, um, an audit report on this entire um, um, situation from the beginning of this administration till now, because this is one of the fundamental promises that this government came on. It's one of the tripod of three key um, areas of action that this government promised anti-corruption and obviously recovery of um, loot is a fundamental part of the fight against corruption. You know, so, but there appears to be a bit of confusion of roles. Um, can't forgive it. I think the important thing is to, to see that, yes, some loot is being recovered and that it is being applied properly and appropriately um, in manners that will benefit the majority of the people. The reason I'm asking this is that uh, in 2021, the House of Reps panel uh, uh, alleged that um, the, the Central Bank of Nigeria illegally paid 2 billion naira uh, from these, these recovered loot to the Attorney General of the Federation. This was in 2021. Uh, uh, also, in 2021, the Attorney General came out to defend himself. He says that um, uh, his ministry was making efforts to ensure that uh, they are allocated some cost of collection from recovered of funds to finance the, uh, the uh, recovery operations. In, in other words, they need this money to, some of this money to be able to go after more money. Um, so there seems to be some, some suspicion, you know, surrounding how these funds are recorded, recovered and used by the, uh, the Attorney General. And some would say that when it comes to fiscal matters in terms of financial um, uh, appropriation and everything. Maybe we should be hearing from the the the, the, the minister of finance, even though she's not uh, exactly very popular right now. So 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 that's why I asked the question. Yeah, 
I mean, look, you have a point, but but um, I, I wouldn't um, necessarily worry about the fact that the Attorney General is giving this report. I think it's very well within his rights because he's the one supervising those recoveries. What, what I think also ought to happen and ought to be happening regularly and periodically if this government were truly sincere about its fight against corruption is that there needs to be a, a report, a, a regular report from the Auditor General to Nigerians giving a rundown of um, loot that have been recovered and what's been done with it. You know, and that has never happened, never. You know, so, so you actually, <laughs> we laugh about these things, even though they're not funny. But you know, there's a new word in the dictionaries, relute. It's a Nigerian thing. You know, how do you relute? So, loot is recovered, and then people steal the loot that has been recovered. So, we now created a word called reluting. So, the loot has been reluted. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's terrible. You know, but but it's a reality. Um, so, so because of those types of things, you know, this president, has, you know, it's, it's just been a cataclysmic failure from, from this man because everything that he said he stood for has turned out to be a lie. Um, how can we have a president that is claiming to be an anti-corruption um, campaigner um, overseeing this type of confusion? Does anybody know how much has actually been recovered since... 2015. Does anybody know? I've, I've looked for it, I've researched it, and you just find different figures, and you find a situation where different organs of government, different tiers of government are fighting for their own share of this loot. You know, so it's it's all it's it's all just a mess. Well, um, Shokuton, let's also look at this now. It's a concern, and it's a question that a lot of Nigerians are asking. What business do we have borrowing? I mean if we have recovered 3.2 billion naira. Now, we, we can't really say that this is all that we have recovered because uh, we don't have all of the information, just like you have mentioned uh, from a certain period. But what business do we still have borrowing? Because recently, uh, there's also been reports that Niger has borrowed uh, 2.45 trillion naira from the Central Bank of Nigeria despite the fiscal risk and we also hear of the warning so my question is what business do we have borrowing if we have recovered this amount and we have several amounts that has been recovered that we do not know why do we constantly say we don't have money for instance mm -hmm. uh, you also have the government saying if you look at the asset situation there's been a lot of talk about asu we can't borrow 1.1 trillion naira, you know to fund asu and all of that that's my question to you well, um, the, the reality that confronts us is that um, our government is broke. Um, and our government has been broke for a long time. Um, even before this administration came on board, uh, I remember, I recall vividly, um, the former finance minister, Ngozi um, Okonjo-Iwela, warned Nigerians to prepare for tough times ahead because government was broke. Um, and this was in 2014, um, eight years ago. Um, so, so why is government borrowing? The recovered loot, if you take the entirety of all of the monies that have been stolen over the years, um, I think some uh, foreign um, journalistic organization did, did a figure, and it was some really, really mind-boggling, was running into trillions of dollars, not naira, of dollars. Um, so, yes, if you're able to track all of that and bring it back home, maybe we would not be as broke as we are. If you're able to track all of that and, um, and, um, and, and, and bring it back home, then maybe um, the budget deficits that we consistently run would, would, would be unnecessary. But the reality is you, you can't track all of that and you can't bring it all back. A lot of it is gone and it's gone for good. Um, so... For me, we really shouldn't be looking at the issue of the loot. Yes, looted funds, we need to get them back because it's our money. But this country is blessed with resources. Whether you want to talk about natural resources, whether you want to talk about human resources, um, we're blessed. And we have the capacity to create wealth that is completely 
on tact and and um, that consistent governments and um, subsequent governments have consistently failed to do um, the revenue profile of our government can be easily quadrupled um, in a very short period if we have sincere leaders let me give you an example just a couple of days ago um, the minister of state for petroleum came out again to say that about 400 um, 400,000 barrels per day of crude is being stolen every day from this country which amounts to depending on who's reporting anything between one billion dollars to two billion dollars per month analyze that and you're talking of 12 billion dollars to 24 billion dollars per annum it's 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 about 30 percent of our entire export profile is being stolen and that is the part of it that the government officials themselves are reporting the the volume of stolen crude is way higher than that there's a lot of unreported um, 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 inventory of crude in that value chain and that's just for crude oil alone you know so we're, we're simply we're running a government that is like a basket there's so much money out there for government to make and then to run the business of governance and to run development and to run infrastructure development and to run human capital development, investing in education, invest, investing in healthcare. But all of that money gets missing, you know, in the pipeline. You know, it just people just have plugged holes, have, have made holes in the pipeline, and they're just simply siphoning what they can. And, and that then leaves us with the so-called revenue that we can see and then government begins to borrow. Otherwise, we really have no reason to borrow given, given where we are. I mean, every country borrows, but the point is that the revenue that you generate should be comfortably sufficient to, to meet your, um, your repayment obligations. And of course, it's no longer news that um, last month it was reported that we now have uh, more repayment obligations than the revenue that accrues to the federal government which is why we, you know, some people say the government is bankrupt. Right. Um, uh, yes, I hear some people use the word junk uh, to describe the economy. Shagun uh, Shopiton, um, whilst, you know, Malami is, is facing the press and, and revealing information about uh, recovery of looted uh, funds stashed abroad, you've also said, uh, of course, that uh, you have more, you know, than what is being talked about right now. But uh, we must... Can we also spare a thought for uh, the Special Presidential Panel on Asset Recovery, a.k.a. SPA, the Special Presidential uh, Panel on Asset Recovery, which was created by Mr. President for the purposes uh, clearly stated in, in its name. Um, but last year, in May 2021, the uh, prosecutor of this Special Presidential Panel had accused um, Abu Bakr Malami Yesi and uh, the Minister of Justice of... Um, demanding for their case files and refusing to return them. I don't know whether there's anything you know, special about having the case files. You know, that he, for instance, he, he made an allegation that uh, the NMPC had allegedly stashed $60 billion of public funds in the United States. This was last year. Um, and he said efforts by the panel to recover the funds were reportedly frustrated by the Minister of Justice in question we're talking about now, uh, who he claimed retrieved the case file from the body, you know, is what he said. He said um, he showed about 20 documents to back his claims that uh, uh, he said that most of the case files prosecuted by the presidential panel were unsuccessful because the minister requested for the case files and never returned them. Um, what's going on? Why are we not hearing from the special presidential panel on, re um, uh, uh, on asset recovery, you know, in such a forum? when this is being discussed, to, you know, before the press? You, you know, this same panel um, at a point accused um, the EFCC of um, illegally appropriating some of the recovered assets. Um, this was about two years ago, thereabouts. Um, so again, you know, this just speaks to um, the, the rot, the, the, the complete rottenness of the entire system and the fact that um, nothing that is going on right now is about you and I, nothing. Nothing that is going on with, with the Attorney General, uh, Malami, um, nothing that is going on 
And even with this so-called special presidential panel, um, nothing that the EFCC is doing is about the Nigeria. You know, all of these people are, as far as I'm concerned, simply a gang of people sitting in those places, um, uh, feathering their own nests and taking care of their own interests and looking after vested interests and looking after the interests of oligarchs um, and maybe as as uh, some people would like to say in, in recent times, of our feudal lords, you know, people just sit, appropriate our commonwealth, and then distribute them um, at their discretion as they deem fit. And that's what this is all about. And that's why you don't have any transparency, you don't have any accountability, um, you don't have... So if I as a civil society activist, and this is not, I'm, I'm not just saying this, this is something we have done. My organization, Trump Accountability, Candle and Transparency Network, has actually done a number of freedom, freedom of information um, requests to um, the Ministry of Agriculture in one, on one occasion, to the Ministry of Transportation on another occasion, and a number of others like that, demanding for information for the public consumption on some of the projects that they were executing. And you know, the response we got was pretty much no response, you know. So they would say, well, you know, the, um, this in one occasion, they said they've already made a publication to the public, you can look for it. Um, on another one, you know, they just said they're looking into it and they'll get back to us. And of course, they never did. Um, so it would then behove on us to then go to court and try to compel them to, to respond to these requests. Government is run in a very opaque manner um, with a lot of cloudiness and shadowiness deliberately so that we don't know what's happening and that's what you have with malami why would malami collect case files and then the case files cannot be returned why obviously there is a cover-up i don't think you know some of these things uh, are not as uh, far-fetched and they're not uh, mysteries it's obvious what is happening and i think that's why nigerians really really need to wise up and um, and ensure that we make better decisions going forward we really 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 need to begin to see a situation where one we put people in government in government positions who care about the people and two that we engage even with those people even if you have people in government that are sincere and that are, are, are people of integrity that mean well and want to do well um, there's something about the power that you gain when you enter public office, and it's not just in Nigeria, that pushes the average human being in the wrong direction of morality. And it is therefore the duty of society to continue to make demand and insist on accountability and insist on transparency and insist that they provide information to the public. Otherwise, they won't. You know, so, so what you have here with all of this loot and you know, is the money keeps coming in and it just gets, it, it, it keeps disappearing. So for example, the, the state government last year sued the federal government that the federal government was um, wrongly applying uh, the about 1.8 trillion in recovered loot that, that, that had come in as at that time. And they wanted the, the, the court to, to, to declare um, that that money should go into the federation account rather than the consolidated revenue account that belongs to the federal government. Why are they doing that? Because they want their own share of the loot, they want their own share of the booty, they want to, you know, to, to have a, a chunk of the money, you know. So um, this is what it's all about. It's it's all right. really unfortunate. Uh, but on. Nigerians need to wake up and understand that these guys are not acting for us. I, I like and the fact that you have mentioned that Nigerians mm -hmm. need to shop it on. Well, let, let's get yes, to this now because we'll cost this conversation down in no time. I mean, I like the fact that you have raised concern that Nigerians need to be on top of the situation. I mean, ensure that, uh, you know, the people are accountable. Uh, the question here is how, how and what can we do as a government, different stakeholders, to ensure that these funds that have been recovered are not looted? Because that's the question. I mean, there's several. We can't even go through the list of funds that have been recovered just within this administration, foreign funds that have been recovered. But the question that everyone is asking is where are these resources? Where have they been kept? If we say we have funds that have been recovered or we have discovered that is yet to be recovered and has been recovered, where are they kept? What have been, they been used to do? What have we used them to do? 
we don't have, we don't seem to have like a list where we can just look up and say, hey, we recovered, uh, you know, 3.2 billion naira from Switzerland, for instance, and we recovered X, Y, Z and all of that. So, but how can we, you know, ensure that there's accountability of looted funds now amongst different stakeholders? Um, there, there are several things that we can do, but, but all of that um, will lie with the public and I think with you guys, the fourth estate of the realm. Um, it's, it's really, it, it, it really has to be a combination of action with, um, in the civic space, um, civil society, um, the media, and you know, just the general public. And you know, so what we need to do is to continue to consistently ask questions. We, don't, we simply don't do enough of this. In fact, we don't do it at all. Only a very, very few people that represents a, a, a small, minuscule percentage of, of, of the civic space are, are making these efforts. So I would like to throw a challenge to um, the middle class, you know, people that, are, that have enough resources, people that are not necessarily pursuing, that are not living from hand to mouth. Um, they're not a large percentage, but they control enough resources if they have the will um, to be able to, to put this fight up, we need to ask questions. We need to ask questions consistently. We need to put out more freedom of information requests to more um, government agencies and more ministries and more parastatals to the presidency, to the legislature, demanding answers. Of course, they are not going to respond. And you know, this is what we keep saying to ourselves. Oh, it's a pointless effort. You send in this letter, they will not respond. I just narrated our own experience. One ministry responded, another one did not. But we have to go beyond this. We have to keep asking. And when they don't answer, we have to go to the next step to try to compel them. The more we put in actions like this, and then the more they will begin to see that, oh, these people are waking up, these people are asking questions. And that will raise a consciousness in them to be more careful. And then there will be, you know, you know um, uh, the, the, the impunity, the level of impunity will reduce. And then, from the point of view of the media, we need to see a whole lot more of investigative journalism. I know that the media space is also under attack. You know, government agencies are fining TV stations because they've done investigative reports and they put information out there. But we can't stop. So when, they, when these things happen, members of the public will speak and fight for the media as well. Because if we don't do this and we just allow the opacity to continue, then you know, we're going to have a situation where government just, they continue to get away with blue murder at the expense of the larger society. And, and we can see the results. The evidence of what I'm saying is in where we are today as a country. The country is, um, has, I don't think we've ever had it this bad, whether it's across the economy, whether it's in terms of security, whether it's education, healthcare, everything is just, everything seems to have gone to a halt. So the, the evidence is there that things are not looking good for us and we cannot continue to behave the way we've been behaving. So members of the middle class need to do more. We need to wake up and understand that no government, even if you bring the most sincere and honest human being to become president today, that person will not act in the common good if he is not put on his toes by a questioning and discerning uh, public and actively engaged citizens. This is the key. We need to become more active. We need to be engaged okay. with, the, with, the, with the governance system. It's not just about voting. It's about asking questions before, during, and after the votes. Interesting. It's indeed about asking questions before, during, and after the vote. Um, uh, people should also are also asking questions about um, this same uh, uh, Malami, who, in conjunction with uh, Zainab Ahmed, the Minister of Finance and Budget, uh, uh, are attempting to, uh, you know, make the the president approve the withdrawal of pa Paris uh, uh, Paris Club, uh, you know, refunds to pay contractors to the tune of four hundred and eighteen uh, million. Uh, dollars and uh, these contracts, so some of that would say didn't follow due process of approval. You have some members of the Federal Executive Council vocally, you know, uh, opposing this, the likes of Babatunde uh, uh, Fashola and uh, Boss Mustafa, this same Malami, uh, seeking to get these monies back. And then people begin to ask more questions about um, his, his motives. Shego Shopito, thank you very much for your time. Always a pleasure. All right. All right. It's a public affairs analyst and chairman of ACT Network. We have more conversations up next. Mercy. Well, uh, we take a break now. When we return, we'll be looking at the fact that, you know, the Premier League is here. And, of course, the gains of 
uh, the Falconets. Uh, that's it. I was going to see the Super Falcons. But of course, we have the yes, Falconets. Yes, it's a long time sir. coming. We'll stay, stay with us when we return. The conversation continues right here.